Come Let's go. When I say I don't know, I don't know. Let's go, baby. Now, the morning drive. Buckle up, everybody. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's a game changer. I listen to you guys every single day on my way to work. Well, again, I'm not a doctor, nor do I play one on the radio. You guys are amazing. What are you doing over there? I'm going to the top. The morning drive with Mike Bagley and Pete Pistoni. To the bat balls. Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90 live and on the air for this Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023. Mike Bagley here in Del Delmarvelous, Studio 1D. We've got Pistol Pete Pistoni in the Paisan Palace in Chicago. We've also got Sammy and Davey in Studio 134, the Beltway Bureau in our nation's capital. We welcome each and every one of you to this Wednesday morning and happy hump day to you, Triple P. Good morning, Bagman. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday to one and all. Halfway home on the work week. And uh, spring break rolls on for many around this great land of ours. How are you, pal? Doing good. Doing very good. Going to warm up this week here in Delaware. Uh, a lot of our students here are vacating the dance floor and going to points beyond for spring break. Mm-hmm. So while we get a break from them, enjoy them as they come and spend time with you wherever you are <laughs> over the course of the next couple of weeks or so. Off you go. <laughs> Off you See go. Ya. Yeah. Bye. Um no, I'll say around here, and as I mentioned, the girls didn't go to Arizona as planned. We were out and about yesterday. There's a lot of people that didn't go. You could tell there are a lot of people who aren't in school this week but didn't go somewhere because there was a lot of traffic. We were on the mall yesterday, went out to dinner last night. A lot of folks have done that, but certainly in some warmer climates, there are a lot of people out there this week. So be careful out there, everybody. Stay safe. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, mind, your, mind your manners. Mind your P's and Q's. Don't get into trouble. You know, I never went anywhere on spring break. I I never did. Well, let me take that back. I did, but it was with my parents. Dad Mm. used to take me out of school in April. And we, as a family, and a couple of other families, would go to Nags Head, North Carolina. Because back in those days, we're talking 70s, 80s. That's when the blues were running. And dad was a big fisherman both on the surf and in a boat, we would go to Nags Head because the blues would make their run up the coast. And, you know, we, I remember having, I mean, the Nags Head Fishing Pier, Oregon Inlet, we'd go out, you know, on the, on the beach and all that. We'd have a good old time. But here's the problem, though. So dad would take me out of school. Well, the teachers would give me homework to do on that break. Well, there you go. So it wasn't like, hey, you know, you're taking a week off and no work to do. I literally would have to go with a bag full of books and, and and all this stuff and i would have to do homework while i was on the road that mm-hmm. was awful no that's that terrible was brutal that's not spring break i mean it is but it isn't was I mean, it technically that, your spring break when they would give you that homework or was he taking you out just at, in a time in spring like was or was that when everybody oh, got no, no, time no. off he was taking me out in the spring but we never but got not, spring break our oh, spring break got- was good friday that's all we got like off from school we didn't have a week off Wow. That's all we got. Lord. That ble- that um, Good God. Friday, and then we were back on Monday. So you were just mm-hmm. a sweet summer child at that point. No spring. <laughs> and no break. That's an, outra- that's an outrage. Oh, well, I did two spring breaks. We were talking before the, the, the show started. We did one in high school, and as a parent today, I can't understand how my parents let 16-year-olds drive from Chicago to Fort Lauderdale. There were five of us, me, Larry, Ron, my friend Carrie, and our friend Jim. In Carrie's mom's station wagon, all the way down, and the ride was so long. And at, let's 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 put it this way: five of us drove down, three of us drove back. It was so bad; two of them decided to fly, to fly home. I'm not going through that again. That's a long drive, man. Really it long, is. long drive. But again, we did it, and we went to Fort Lauderdale. And then in college, we went back to. Uh, Florida, but I think that was a combo plan. I, I remember going to Orlando. We just sort of bounced around, you know. Not like today, where like you were talking before. Now everything sort of migrated over to Panama Beach. You know, there's a lot of different destinations. It was always Florida back in the days when I was in school. Well, th- the world is totally different now, and the whole. I mean, if if today's society lived when we were growing up and what our parents allowed us our parents would have been in jail (laughs) no doubt 
I was no left home when I was 10, 11. Like, mm-hmm. my parents would leave me home alone, and mm-hmm. I would be cool. I mean, and there was no issue. It's like mom and dad would go out to Leone's with the Hudson's for dinner. Hey. Oh, Leone's, mud up, mud up. Son. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Leone's. How much Sounds did you good. live? How much did you, was that, I assume that was like a Friday or Saturday night thing. How much did you live for a Leone's night with for your parents when you were a kid? Was that like, oh, mom and dad are going to leave me home alone. This is, uh, <laughs> I'm going to run around well, my underwear or something like that. Was, well, was that oh, how you oh, thought? Well, he does well, that now. That What's the difference? No, yeah, right. <laughs> but back then, see, remember, we didn't have all that we had like today. So leaving me home alone involved me watching The Incredible Hulk at 8 and Dukes of Hazard at 9 and Dallas at 10. Well, when I say they left me home, it was for a couple of hours. It wasn't for like a day. Oh, but still. Right. But you still, know. it was kind of cool. But I could play video games, and that's mm-hmm. what I did. I played video games and watched The Incredible Hulk with Bill Bixby. And then next thing you know, mom and dad are home, and it's time to go to bed. I mean, it was very – we didn't have all that we have today back then. Don't make me so angry. it didn't take much to entertain ourselves because, hell, we didn't have much to begin with. Oh, that's true. <laughs> See, as an only child, I had the complete opposite. There was never a home alone. I mean, are you kidding me? When my mom and dad would go out, they had four sisters running around. We were all jammed up running around. So never had the house to myself. The biggest thing was back in those days, going to the mall. That was when the malls were the big thing, right? Everybody goes to the mall. You'd walk up. There's 20 kids hanging outside the mall. Parents would drop their kids at the mall and come pick them up two or three hours later. But Dover Mall had this bomb arcade. I mean, it was the arcade. It was the Cadillac of arcades. Wait, never to been where a you had these ramps that would go. I mean, it was just, you know, and it had like, um, it was like real dark in there, but they had like little, like the star streamer thing. They had those kind of things mm-hmm. going in there. Mm-hmm. Well, across from there was Bull on the Beach, where they would do these big roasts of beef, and they would slice them for you as you'd come up, and they're on the spit and all this. Oh, it was spectacular. Wow. But that was in the mall heyday. I would stockpile quarters secretly. And at, listen, I think the statute of limitations is over. Mom and dad are no longer with us. So when dad would take his change out and put it on his dresser, I would take the quarters, and and then I would start hoarding the quarters, and I would tuck them away, but then give mom the shakedown for more quarters when we went to the mall. I'm sitting there with about $8 in quarters. Hey, you know what? Shop all you want. I'm going to be in here. I'm good. Playing both sides (laughs) against the middle. That a boy, Baggy. Get in there. That's right. Yeah. That's That's right, man. Those were the days. Well, yeah. uh, it's funny you bring up the mall because yesterday the girls went to Woodfield, which is the really giant mall here in the suburbs of Chicago. And I had not been there. I said, you know what? You guys go. I'll do some stuff. I'll meet you. Let's go to, to dinner. So we went to Weber Grill Restaurant for dinner last night on a Tuesday. Steaks it was really good. But I haven't been to the mall. And let's be honest, the mall really took this one did a beating during COVID because the, the mm-hmm. time I was there before this it felt like half the mall was closed, Mike. It felt like that's how many stores. It, it has come back, which is good. There's a lot more stores. But I felt like I was walking down the strip in Vegas. You know when you walk down the strip in Vegas, and those people are coming at you with the cards, flapping the cards, right? Everywhere you walk in the mall, somebody's trying to shake. Me. Hello, sir. How are you? And they all want to like pitch me something. I'll clean those shoes for you. You want to smell good? I can give you a massage. I'm like, I don't come to the mall for any of these things. Me too. I was just walking. I was getting steps. They were shopping. I'm like, whatever. I'm going to go to the Apple store and do my things. Sir, what's more important, clean air or clean water? What, what kind of a question is that? First of all, what are you doing? I'm trying to walk around the mall. What do I need that question for? They were trying to sell me something. But man, that was it was good to see the mall full, but it was like, leave me alone. My goodness. Look, the only, look both I went to the mall too. for three. <laughs> yes, they I are. I went to the mall for three things and three things only. The arcade, Sam Goody, Sam Goody. and Spencer Gifts. That's <laughs> yes. it. Yeah. That's the only three things in the mall that interested what me. What would you buy time. at Sam Spencer's? Goody, that was uh, posters. That's oh, where you got buy, uh, go to buy your posters to put on the wall. Yeah, I never had a lava lamp, yeah. but you, you can get a lava lamp. You can I get bought all I bought fake dog poop there one time, and my mm-hmm. mom got really mad at me. <laughs> she was like, "This is poop. what you waste your money on." And I was like, "Yeah, I want to just prank people with fake dog poop. Why can't I do that?" Fake vomit too. They had. Yeah, a lot of I, have, I, I wanted to get that too at one point. <laughs> I don't think. But those what about two... Sam Goody? I mean, th- that back in the day, that was. I mean, that's when they had albums. That's yeah. When they had four. Well, the albums were getting phased out. That's when CDs. 
the sit when the CDs came online, mm-hmm. man, oh man, you wait to get that new Bruce Springsteen CD or that Whitney Houston CD back in the day. You put the headphones on at the uh, like mm-hmm. at the little kiosk and you can kind of you flip through and see what's yes. new and stuff, mm-hmm. and you're like. This isn't that bad, actually. I will buy the CD now. I, I yeah. even I remember going and doing that. I, mine was not. I do remember doing it at Sam Goody, but Barnes and Noble like was yeah. becoming big at that time, and they were a big, big album seller at that point. We had me. Sam Goody, then that got to Tower Records, and then Tower Records led to Barnes and Noble, to Borders, and that's how that all goes. But I do remember those heads, headphones, Sammy, and you push the button to listen to the track. Kind of gross to think about now that like yes. I would just wear headphones at some. Uh, I, I would like people would like wait in line. Are you, are you done yet? Like, mm-hmm. give me them headphones. So in that context, last <laughs> night I watched a documentary and. Um, there is this thing, the 2000s, right? I've watched the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and I watched the one last night about the I revolution, uh-huh. talking about how Apple came to life and how you know Bill Gates and, and Steve Jobs were friendly foes for the mm-hmm. most part. There was a yeah. tense relationship between them, but it got better towards the end. But it was beyond where the, because um, the Apple, well, the first Apple computer was in the 80s, but in 2000s, that's when the iPhone came out, the iPad came out, and all that. And going back and looking at some of the news reports and all that from that day to where it was like, wait a minute, I can actually have a device that can slip in my pocket and I can listen to music on? And then the phone that showed him debuting the iPhone to where, you know, you have, you know, the, the phone, you've got internet, and then you've got music. And he says... Those are the three things that we're going to be talking about today. And then it, you could tell in the crowd, wait, what? And then he says, I introduced the iPhone and we're going to change. The, and at the moment, at that, when that came out, everybody thought Steve Jobs had lost his mind. What in the world are you doing? And now you can't make a move without nope. it being in your hand. Nope. You cannot even go to the bathroom without taking your iPhone with you. I mean, it goes everywhere, and you're on it constantly. And from those times back then when he just introduced this to now, he created something that changed life in every human around the world. No doubt. Imagine that, creating something like that that alters humanity as we know it. And then there comes that Android stuff. Well, you got to you know, keep up. Whatever. So it's a knockoff. It's a knockoff is what it is. I paid the bill last wow. night. They have, they have at the restaurant we went to, they – on the – uh, on the table is a QR code, and somehow it's connected to the server. You just hold up your phone. The, the mm-hmm. bill pops up on your phone. You pay with mm-hmm. Apple Pay. No muss, no fuss. I'll see you. Amanda, she had a really, really good server last night, so I gave her 10%. No, no, no. I gave her more than that. Um, but it was really easy. What, 12? I gave her 20. I gave her 20. 11.5. Yeah, she was really good. It's amazing. We talk about that so much, how servers impact your experience at a restaurant. She was really good. Um, but, yeah, everything... You know, you you should see that Steve Jobs movie, uh, Baggy. It's pretty good. The one Aaron Sorkin wrote and directed. It's a really good story. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Really good. Uh, What else? Now, hold hold on a second. So now you mentioned tip. Now, we've discussed gratuities a lot on this show. But do you know the one thing, at least with me, the one thing that if you possess it, you can get away with a little questionable service? Personality. Oh, no doubt. You're cool. Mm-hmm. And you're, you know, you're just mm-hmm. a cool person and mm-hmm. you joke and you have a good time and you have a bubbly personality. I will forego some service shortcomings and maintain the current tip percent. But if you if you are given shoddy service and your personality is not good and you're kind of like a mean person, forget about it. I don't need that. It. You're done. No. She was bo- she was great on both ends. And one of the things I was concerned about because it was and it was really crowded, and when, which is another on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday, it was really crowded. She kind of gave she. We put the appetizer order in. Oh, some uh, grilled Brussels sprouts, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Bacon, and then she mm-hmm. said, "Do you want to put the order in?" I said, "Well, the only reason I want to put the order in is I don't want. I hate that. Michelle hates it too. I'm eating the appetizer. I'm eating a salad because I got a wedge salad as well. I don't want the steak there. Time it out. Perfect. Got the appetizer done. Got the salad done." Cleared the plates, sat, here comes the food. So it was perfect. Yeah, and her personality was great, too. So, thank Now, you. how much pregame did you have? Because you are the one that you like to go to the bar and have a drink first, and then you mm-hmm. go to the table, and you sit there for a little bit, then you have the appetizer, you sit a little bit. It's, 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 a, 
Yeah. It it can be a drawn out process. No rush. Over a couple of hours. No rush. So uh, right? the girls were shopping. I said, I'll meet you there. So I went to and had one pregame at the bar, watched a little of the WBC, and then they came, and then I had my second glass of wine at the table for dinner. So it worked out perfectly. Couldn't have planned it better. And it was one of those things that we didn't have planned because they were supposed to be out in Arizona. And I was supposed to be home eating Portillo's, watching baseball with Buddy. Didn't turn out that way. Poor Buddy came up short. Oh, well. He'll be all right. Take care of him. Come on now. Well, it's like the old days when we would bring home steaks. You mentioned like my mom and dad would go out for steak dinners. They would bring the bone of the steak home because we had a collie back when I was growing up, Tammy, and they would give the bone to the dog. I can't give but First of all, the bone's bigger than Buddy, so that wouldn't work out. But yeah, you know, said, that's where the doggy bag came from. Bring home the bone for the dog, right? My parents did the same thing for me when I was a toddler. <laughs> oh, we left Sammy home by himself. Let's bring him the bone. Explains a lot. I'd go, <laughs> I'd go tear that bone <laughs> See, we used to take a bone home to Duchess, and Duchess See? knew. Yeah. She knew when we walked in. By the way, Duchess looked exactly like Lassie, except for the white patch on her nose. See, that was she our She did dog. not have the white patch. It looked Tammy, exactly like Lassie. Tammy, Tammy and Duchess are the same dog, it sounds like. That's so funny. Interesting. Well, Duchess would know. Duchess would be in the house. We'd come back, and you know, Dad would order the cattle drive cut. Well, and sure. And he'd bring the bone home, and then the she, their drive. tail wagon... Like, yes, Daddy. Yes, let me have it. Let me have it, please. And here he goes. Gives, puts the bone in the dog bowl. And next thing you know, two days later, Duchess is still in there. Dig. Oh, Get mm -hmm. in there, Duchess. Yeah. Keep going, girl. Mm hmm. Yeah. But then one time she got a bone lo lost in her throat. We had to take oh, her to the vet. See what I mean? That's good. There you go. There you go. <laughs> now I got a dachshund who's so small, I got to give him a baby carrot. And that's about all he can chew. <coughs> He's on a diet. Try to slim him down a little bit. I'm thinking that at least half of the week that was has come from this opening segment right now because I'm, I'm seeing Currently a lot of snipping going there's on back lot, there in there's D.C. A lot going on back there. There's a lot happening right there. A lot of slicing and dicing here. Okay, got it. And we've got lots coming up on the show today. Bottom of the hour, headline check number one. Coming up at 8 a.m. in the East, we'll visit with Jamie Little of NASCAR on Fox. We'll get Jamie's thoughts on the uh, opening five race weekends of the year. Coming up at 8.20, we'll visit with Austin Sindrick. Driver of the number two Ford Mustangs for Team Penske. Coming up at 8.40, Joey Logano, race-winning driver from Sunday's and Better Health 400 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. The calendar will happen at around 9.50 a.m. this morning. Coming up at 10, we'll visit with Adam Stevens, Christopher Bell's crew chief in the NASCAR Cup Series. Coming up at 10.30, we'll visit with Ryan Truex, who had another good run over the weekend in Atlanta. We'll take your calls this morning at 866-BITLANE. And, of course, we'll take your tweets as well at SiriusXM NASCAR. Hashtag TMD NASCAR.